It's, it's a really fascinating time in ovarian cancer at the moment um, because the term ovarian cancer we now think applies to probably five completely different cancers that arise in areas around the ovary but maybe don't even come from the ovary. Most people would think of cancer as maybe a ball of malignant cells and you know and, and they wouldn't be wrong but in fact that's only half the story. The other half of every cancer that we know of is made up of what are ostensibly normal cells and they're corrupted and recruited by the cancer to help it grow and spread. So the cancer becomes a rogue organ. And that rogue organ, the other cells that are in the uh, ball of malignant cells are very similar to the type of cells we see when you have chronic inflammatory disease. By learning about the links between cancer and inflammation, we can find out uh, and, and we are indeed doing, finding new ways to treat cancer. And what, what we're studying is how conventional treatments, like chemotherapy, um, how that alters the immune cells, how that alters that rogue organ, how it alters the inflammatory response, and how we can then target that and, and this is sort of a very exciting area at the moment. There are many new treatments that target cancer cells much more specifically than we used to be able to do it. But the problem is that the cancer cells evolve and they become resistant to these, just like bacteria become resistant to antibiotics. But if we can uh, begin to manipulate the chronic inflammatory cells in a cancer, they, they are more normal, they're more stable, and so we have more chance of having an effect on them and maybe doing that in combination with targeting the malignant cells. Within these cancers, we have a whole army of cells that, were they doing their right job, are probably capable of recognizing and killing the cancer cells, but they've been corrupted and suppressed by the cancer cells and some of the very fascinating areas of future treatment and that we're working on preclinically at the moment is to try and re-educate, to wake up those cells so that instead of supporting the cancer to grow, they can target it. If you think a, a woman with advanced high-grade serous ovarian cancer when she gets symptoms and sees a doctor could have a million million extra cells that she shouldn't have that are part of the cancer. Well, half of those will be not malignant cells at all, but cells that we could maybe manipulate and turn into a whole army of good killer cells that might destroy the cancer. So this is, this is sort of, these are our thought processes that we work on at the moment in our research. So this is, this is an exciting area and certainly um, there are treatments for uh, inflammatory disease that can be tested uh, in cancers and also prevention, not just treatment. Because it's now clear from large analysis of thousands and thousands of patients taking, for instance, aspirin, which is an anti-inflammatory drug, that there is a decreased risk of some cancers, or even if they get cancer while they're taking aspirin, there's a, a decreased risk of cancer spreading.